Here I am in ProtoPy Studio and I have my Pi file open. And if I preview this, you see that this is a climate control and it has full touch control. So if I tap in the middle, I can toggle the power state of it on and off. And then I can drag the arcs up here to adjust both the temperature and the fan speed. In order to also make this work from our Arduino, we need to add in some messages that it will receive through ProtoPie Studio. Now, I'm not going to go through how this Pi was built. You can download and deconstruct it. It's not that complicated. Uh, but where, what I want you to pay attention to the most here are these messages that come in. We have a message that comes in called on off, and this toggles the on off state of the climate control. We have a message temp up one for temp down, and these increase and decrease the temperature respectively. And then we have two more messages, fan up and fan down, and these increase the fan speed and decrease the fan speed respectively. So let's open up connect, and we are going to pull our Pi file. Let's preview this in our browser. Now I should be able to tap it in the middle. I can drag on the arcs. Okay, and it's still working as I expect. Let's hook this up with block dots now. I'm going to start block dots. And right now, I don't have my Arduino connected. So I'm going to plug it in with my USB cable. If this is the first time that you're running block dots, it's going to install a special firmware on your board. And there we go. Now we're ready. In order to interact with our components, we need to connect them. We have two buttons and we have two encoders. Now remember that the encoders we use are also push buttons. So you add them separately. So let's use a button. And if you recall, we connected the button to digital two, which is the first one that is selected because that's the first free port. Um, however, if you have it connected somewhere else, you can pick a different one, but we're on digital two and you have to hit set component. And now I am going to add another component. This time it will be an encoder. And this one was on digital three. And you'll see here, it says digital three and then digital four. Remember when we wired everything up and I mentioned that the encoders needed to use two sequential connectors on the Arduino. Here you can see, we've told it that it's connected on D3 and it's automatically picked D4 as the second one. Now let's use the button from the second encoder and it's on digital five. Now with all my components connected, you can see I can interact with them. I can click the first button and you can see the state will change. I can turn the first one clockwise and it counts upwards. I can turn it counterclockwise and it counts downwards. I can click the second encoder and the state changes. And I can turn the second one clockwise, it counts upwards and counterclockwise and it counts downwards. Okay, now you will notice that we do have a difference in the way our buttons work. If you have everything wired up as I showed you, both of your buttons should actually look like this one D5, where it shows one and it's green on there, and it actually goes to zero when you click it. I've discovered that with these encoders in particular, and I don't know if it works with all encoders, but with these ones, if you hook up the power and the ground backwards, so you connect the power to the ground pin on the encoder and the ground wire to the voltage pin on the encoder, then you get normal button behavior. If you look at D2, right now it's showing zero, and if I click it, it goes to one, and if I let go, it goes back to zero. Block Dots is still in beta, so some things are being worked on, and the folks at Block Dots have told me that they will work into getting reversing the behavior of the buttons. Most buttons will behave like you have in this one, D2, but in the case of these encoders and most encoders of this kind, it will probably behave like D5. Now, it's not a big deal. It will work just fine for what we're trying to do. Um, but if you wanted to do things like actions when you held the button down, you're going to run into some issues. But if you're seeing it behave like D5 and reversing the voltage and ground wires doesn't work for you, put it back to the way it was. And if your button behaves like this one, the one on D5, it'll still work. The last thing we need to do is we need to add the ProtoPie Connect integration. At the bottom, click on Add Integration, click on ProtoPie Connect. And you can see it's showing connected. And if we go back to Connect and I click on Plugin, you're going to see Block Dots is showing connected right here. Let's set up our logic inside Block Dots. First, you need to tell Block Dots which pieces you're going to use. We're going to use the first button 
and we're going to use both encoders. I'm not going to use the second button. I actually don't need it. Um, I just had it in here for demonstration purposes so you can show the difference between wiring it up backwards versus wiring it up normally. But I only need one button, so I'm just going to use the first one. So I'm going to leave that name button, and I'm going to rename these encoders. So I'm going to call this one temp control, and I'm going to call this one, and I'm just double clicking by the way, I'm going to call this one fan control. All right, let's hook up our button first if and I choose the button is pressed one time, then protopy connect should send the message. And if we look back over here in our Pi, the message is on off. So let's just copy that. Now let's add in the temperature control if temp control, and you have some options here and we want when it counts up, then protopy connect should send the message. And I have this message here, temp up. And I'm gonna add another one for when it's turned the other way. So if temp control is counts down, then protopy connect should send the message, temp down. If I turn the if I turn the knobs here, so if you look at D3, for example, this encoder here, you're going to see if I turn clockwise, the number counts up, and if I turn counterclockwise, the number counts down. So counts up, that's when the encoder is turned clockwise. And card 2, that's when the encoder is turned counterclockwise. I need to do the same for the fan control, and that's the second encoder we have on here connected on D6. If fan control counts up, then protopy connect should send the message fan up. And one more, if fan control counts down, protopy connect will send the message fan down. And that's it. That's everything you need to do. All I have to do is run the project now and if we open up connect, I should now see messages coming through. So I'm going to click the first encoder and you can see the on off message came through and I'm going to turn. You can see as I turn counterclockwise, the temp down message comes up. And if I turn clockwise, the temp up message comes through. And if I turn the second encoder clockwise, the fan up message comes through. And if I turn it counterclockwise, the fan down message comes through. And now we should be able to interact with our Pi. So if I click the button, it turns on my climate control system. And if I turn the first encoder, that increases the temperature. And if I turn it counterclockwise, it decreases the temperature. And if I turn the second encoder clockwise, that increases the fan speed. And if I turn it counterclockwise, that decreases the fan speed. Now I haven't lost my touch control here. That'll still work. So if I drag and I can change the fan speed and I can change the temperature and I can turn the climate control system on and off. And there you go. You've got a Pi that can be controlled by touch and with physical controls connected to an Arduino using ProtoPi Connect's Block Dots plugin. And you didn't even have to write a single line of code.